Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about airbrushing miniatures from start to finish and everything about airbrushes in general that you will need to know. And this is part 7, masking, where I will talk about masking miniatures in preparation for painting to keep some areas clean. Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about getting to know and working with the coolest tool in painting, an airbrush. As always, my name is Jay, and today I will be discussing masking. Now, masking is very important when painting miniatures because, like, if you're painting a wall with a spray gun, you, you gotta mask the floor and the ceiling. Not a lot, you know, it's a huge surface. But models are much smaller surfaces, and a lot of the time you don't want to spray the whole thing. So today I'll be discussing a few th tips on how to mask your miniatures, both with tape and without tape. And just how to protect different surfaces and how to use tape effectively. So it's, again, a, a kind of basic video, but the point of it is to get everyone on the same playing field, the same plane of knowledge. So first of all, people always ask me all the time, what do I use for masking off my miniatures? The answer is I use painter's tape. If you don't have painter's tape, I recommend using uh, just normal masking tape, since it's used for masking. Uh, but I use painter's tape, either green or blue, they're both pretty solid. They, some people argue they have different adhesion levels, but I find both of them work just fine. Depending on whatever I'm working on that day, I mix it up between green and blue. I use primarily blue, but green works just as fine. And I use these to mask off my miniatures. Now, why specifically masking tape or this? Um, because they have the perfect balance between stickiness and non-stickiness, basically. You wouldn't want to use a tape like duct tape Deck tape is so sticky that yes, it would mask perfectly, and you know you're not gonna get paint under that tape, but then it's gonna rip off everything that was under it, for sure. Versus, you know, other tapes like scotch tape, which will not be adhesive at all, so it won't rip off any of the tape under it, but it won't protect the, the model from spray, so it will end up not masking it at all. So these are the perfect combination, they're the perfect medium, you know. Um, they have some adhesion, so they do prevent the, the paint from going under it, but they don't stick too crazily, so they won't rip off layers of paint. But I'll be going over that uh, a little bit later. So, basically today, I will be just showing how I typically mask miniatures. Maybe I'll do a little bit of spraying and just to show you guys and girls some, uh, some techniques. But uh, it's pretty much simple. So basically, I like to take this and apply it to my miniature. I'll be showing that in a moment. And the key, though, is um, you always want to keep the straight edge towards the surface that you are masking, right? If you're trying to go into a straight direction. Um, if you end up ripping it, let's say if this is too thick, I end up ripping it in half or ripping on parts. This, for example, might be the right thickness. Always make sure that the straight edge part is towards the part you're masking, and the opposite part can be uh, can be away from it. So today, my example for my masking will be this orc truck, since it has some cool different you know pieces. I'll show you how to mask various parts and just repeat this process over and over again. But uh, as I said, I'm just going to be using a standard painter's tape, a masking painter's tape, and I will be. Uh, Masking this off of various things and, and painting it up. So let's go ahead and start. All right, so here is our truck, and we're gonna mask off certain sections, and we're gonna paint this a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about uh, masking off pieces. So here's just the miniature I was using in the previous miniature painting one, one how to build paint checkers. But today we're going to go over some of these areas with uh, with these. So we'll take our masking tape right, our painter's tape, and we will simply, let's say we're trying to paint this entire middle section. So the key is we want to mask off all the sides. So I'm just gonna apply this, make sure you get really nice straight lines when applying the tape, and then just make sure that it sticks primarily. Now, the part like this, since you have the ability to wrap it around it, I highly suggest you do, because it'll keep the tape really stuck in its place. So look at that, we have a nice crisp line between there and there. It's very much stuck to it and it's wrapped around. So this piece will not go anywhere. And we're gonna repeat this on the other side. 
So once again, this part right here, we're going to mask that off. Look at that. It's completely masked off. And then same thing for the top part. So once again, a straight line. Wrap it around if possible. This kind of preparation, it does take up time, but uh, it will save you a lot of time in the end since you then don't have to re spray everything. Now, here is the part. So, as you can see, this part is completely masked up. We got a nice, good, solid piece of stickiness on there. So, this part is completely masked off. This part is still, uh, is still exposed to your paint job. So this will depend on how comfortable you are as a, an airbrusher. If you're not very comfortable, just take another piece of tape and repeat the process. Simple as that. If you are comfortable, you don't have to. But now, it's completely masked off. We're protecting this part and we're protecting all this. This is good. The next thing that you want to um, consider when masking miniatures is your airbrush spray direction. And I will be going over that in a future piece because this is kind of a, a straightforward mask job so that we can mask that off. And if you want to mask off the ladders, we'll finish off masking the ladders here. So let's finish up masking off this guy. And then the key is I said, get the straight edge in contact. Always try to connect it to another surface. So that doesn't end up being too flimsy of a bond. Look at that. So that's masked off too. And then we'll mask off mm, the ladders. So now I'm just going to go ahead and airbrush the back of the truck with my Badger Patriot 105 and Calador Sky, which is actually a perfect match for my blue masking tape. Just kind of a fun example because that way I can remove the tape later and it's kind of see, cool to see where the paint ends and the tape begins. And as I said before, I'm going to let this dry for a while after I'm done so that way the tape doesn't accidentally remove any pieces of the paint afterwards. But I'm just going to carefully apply a nice consistent layer over the entire truck. So here we go. Now it's been completely airbrushed. As you can see, it's blue. But now we have to let it set for a few minutes. I always let it dry as long as possible before removing the, um, the pieces of tape. So always let it dry entirely. Let it set and then remove the tape because then you get nice crisp lines and very minimal removing. You just don't want to, uh, you don't want to do it when it's mid drying because then you might rip off a piece of tape and it might take off some with it. So let it dry entirely. So now we're going to go ahead and let it set for a little bit and then we'll take off the uh, the pieces. So now with the magic of television we've allowed this to set for a couple hours. So now it's really dry. So simply remove the paint. Now when, not the paint, the masking tape obviously. So when removing the masking tape, I like to start going outwards. And all you do is remove it nice and easily. As you can see. Just key to remove it. Nice crisp lines. And Obviously, I will be repainting for this in the future. But uh, there we go. So the lines we've painted over. Protected. That. And so, that's essentially it for masking. It's just take your time, mask out the lines, make them nice and clean. Well, let's keep going because uh, this tutorial would be pretty boring otherwise. So now let's talk about double, uh, what I like to call the second layer of masking. So let's say I wanted to paint a section of this a different color. 
Uh, first of all, if you want to mask over a painted surface, such as this one, especially if you've already airbrushed it, the key is let it dry. Let the paint set as long as you can. I recommend at least an hour or two. Because the problem is, even though painter's tape or masking tape is relative, you know, it comes off relatively easy, it's still sticky. And if you put it on a surface for a long period of time and then raise it up, you run the risk of removing the paint you just put on. Now, see, the best thing about airbrushes is that they put on a very nice thin line of paint. And the only downside to that is, is that it's easy to remove. So let the paint set. That is one of the things I cannot recommend enough is let the paint set when you um, are painting over a painted surface. And this will come into effect in future videos, especially when painting force weapons, um, because you paint half the sword, remask it, and then paint the other half the sword. Another thing I like to do is add a varnish, uh, and then let the varnish set as well, because it adds an extra layer of protection to, uh, to this. So now, we've masked off half the model, so half the back, so I'm gonna spray the other half. This brings up another part that I like to bring, talk about when uh, talking about masking. Now many people, uh, now I found myself doing this when I was new to airbrushing as well, will take their airbrush and airbrush this part. This part's masked off, so they'll airbrush all here. Now that's a, a mistake. See, when airbrushing, the direction in which you airbrush also matters if you're masking, especially if, if there's only a single direction of masking. Because if the mask, t if the tape is here, and it, the, the point of contact is here between the painted side and you know the part you're going to be painting, and the non-painted part. Um, if I airbrush from this angle, the air is going to get under, or has the has the opportunity at least to get under the tape, and so does the paint. So when I spray it, the paint, the air can potentially lift the paint, uh, not the paint, the, the masking tape or the painter's tape, and paint can get under it. Versus, same masking job, if I spray from this angle, all the air will be hitting the surface and just pushing, constantly pushing down the, the tape. So this angle, or even from directly from above, but this angle is a much safer way to spray, uh, to airbrush your miniature. Versus, as I said, this angle, where I potentially lift the, the masking tape and airbrush underneath it. That's kind of defies the purpose of the masking tape. So once again, we've masked it off. Half the I'll mask off half the back, and let's add a, another color to it. In this case, I will do a random color. Let's do purple. So I'm going to take my purple, and now it's time to airbrush half of this, and I'll show you the angle will matter in this. Part. So as I said, the angle, we're masked it off really well. There we go. So it's completely masked off. And I'm going to spray just a section here. I don't mind getting over here. As I said, this will, this truck will get a new paint job in the future. So let's go ahead and airbrush once again. So once again, I'm going to apply a purple layer over the surface. But the key is, as I mentioned, is to go from a vertical angle, or if you're going to go from a, an, an angle more sideways, go from the direction of the tape. That way you're blowing over the tape and not under it. So once again, we've had given it a little time to settle. So we're gonna take this, very slowly peel it back. That way we don't, look at that. Perfect. So a completely straight line. Once again, we've given it some time to set. Nice, smooth, look at that line. No paint removed because we gave it time, tons of time to set. And this paint is okay because once again we gave that time to set. Now we have a perfectly beautiful backup tank that everyone would want, obviously. Who doesn't want the blue purple tank or truck? Mm -hmm. Good stuff there. So for the next part, I'm going to just, these new examples are just going to be new different types of masking that you can use. So now we're, we're going to mask. A, a slightly irregular shape. Now it still has really nice uh, edges. So we're just gonna take our tape and we're gonna mask out the front of uh, this part right here. So this little triangle piece right here, which you'll be able to see. So let's mask that. So what I'm gonna do is just simply take pieces of tape 
and line them up. And you can mask off. Just a line at a time. Try to make sure that you cover about a line. So if you, you know, like this entire edge from here to here, you can see that. I'm gonna try to mask that off in one piece. There we go. And I'm gonna make sure that as always my straight edge is the one that's doing all the masking. Uh, the rest of it is just going on. So there's one direction. I'll line up the next part. There we go. Mask off. That's essentially it. So we're just going to take the tape and we're going to mask off that whole thing one piece at a time. So one here. There we go. Of course, I would like what I like to do is tuck in. As always, I like to tuck in and just keep them as close as possible. That way, it's a nice tucked in look of the tape. That's all we need. So now we can mask it off. So as I said, you can just break up the pieces of tape into a little bit smaller pieces and go ahead. This tape isn't sticking particularly amazing at the moment. There you go. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to paint that purple too. Why not? So now we'll have a purple piece. And as you can see, I'm letting my finger close that other gap because you can't really tape there. So rather than taping everything behind it, I'm going to put my finger there with my glove and use that Here we go. Cool. So we've given it a little more time to set. So once again, just be very careful. Let's move away the masking tapes. Look at that. So in this particular example, as I mentioned while I was filming it, I use my finger as a blocking device. You can actually use your hands as, as I always recommend using gloves, of course, whenever you're using your hands as masking devices. But in this particular case, it would be almost impossible for me to mask behind here, unless I want to, uh, the other option would be to put a piece of tape on the back and just have it face that way. The only problem is with your blowing direction, as I mentioned earlier, your blowing direction is gonna blow the tape away. So in this case, I like to just put my finger right there, keeps it safe, and look at that, no paint over there. Paint right there, nice clean piece, and a nice, uh, very clean masking. So, for this final piece of masking tape advice for Airbrush 101, here's a good way, uh, here's another fun trick if you wanna mask a miniature in a specific way. Like let's say I really had already done all that I wanted to do on this this uh, gray knight here, but then all I had left to do was his halberd. Uh, another trick for is not using tape at all actually is if you poke a small hole. So I'm going to take an old glove, right, and I'm going to cut a small hole. Now obviously be careful in one of the fingers. So there's a small hole right here. And all I'm gonna do is take my miniature, put it in my glove. So 
So now I can literally wrap my glove around the rest of the miniature. And because these gloves are obviously paint resistant, like they, they will block paint. So now I've got a pretty nice solid easy wrap around this halberd and I can spray it any color I wish. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it now white while protecting the rest of the miniature in my glove. Now for this I actually recommend using old gloves because now, because once you use a glove it's, it's done. So you might as well, uh, you know, gives it another use. So let's go ahead and spray this white. And finally I'm just going to airbrush the halberd white while keeping the extra parts just clenched in my fingers. Make sure that none of the paint gets into the glove, though it's only a tiny hole anyway, so it's it's unlikely, but just to protect the rest of it. It's an all-white halberd. As you see, it's completely protected the model. No paint got on it. Completely good. Safe masking. Good stuff. So that's another way of masking smaller parts uh, with a miniature rather than using tape. Other things that people can use, have used is like silly putty. Silly putty can leave a residue if you uh, don't use it correctly. So I just prefer using gloves. And there you go. So that basically concludes this episode of Airbrush 101 about masking. So to sum up what I went over today, I recommend using painter's tape or masking tape to mask your miniatures. If they're a small miniature, you can actually get away with using the glove trick, which is what I showed in the last example. Which is pretty cool. Other people have said using silly putty as well, which you can use too. It just takes a lot of time to put on and remove from the model. And uh, yeah, just make sure that you get the nice straight edges and always take into consideration the angle of spray relative to the tape itself. You don't you want to minimize the amount of time that you're spraying under or into the masking tape. That way you don't want to actually disturb it and paint under it. When masking the surface, it's already been painted, make sure that it sets. I recommend at least an hour before you uh, before you add tape over it, and always let the paint dry before removing the tape as well, because that way you don't actually remove a layer of paint. And that's it. And try to use the straight edges as much as you can to your advantage. That's the basics of uh, masking miniatures. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below if you want to add anything to the discussion. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned a bit about masking miniatures. And stay tuned for the next video where we're going to take this knowledge and we're going to build gradients on some force swords. It's going to be fun. So we're going to use our airbrush to create a gradient to one side, mask the surface, and then create a gradient to the other just to create some cool gradients on swords. It's going to be fun. So stay tuned for next episode of Airbrush 101. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with your airbrush.